In this two-part video, we'll solve an ODE related to the Earth's population. In the last video, we drew the phase portrait and anticipated solution. We'll use them to confirm our numerical answer we'll obtain shortly. We have this first-order nonlinear ODE, which we'd like to solve via MATLAB's ODE45 function. We'll perform a couple of parameter studies, so it's probably wise to make our own user-defined function which solves the ODE. Let's jump into MATLAB to do this. Here we are in MATLAB. I typed out a few parameters ahead of time. The problem says we need to start in the year 1800 and use a step size of 1 in our time vector, but it doesn't tell us what the end time should be. I played with the problem beforehand and found Tn equals 2200 to be a proper stopping time. This requires some experimentation, and you won't always get it right the first time. I also have the options variable, which changes the accuracy of ODE45. These are actually the default tolerances. The problem doesn't require us to change the accuracy, but I'm including this line in case you want to play around with it on your own. Next, we have a brief blurb about the fixed points. As we know from the last video, we have two fixed points, one at 0 and one at a over b. The fixed point at 0 is unstable, and the fixed point at a over b is stable, so a over b is our steady state population. Part c of the problem wants us to solve the ODE numerically. Afterwards, we need to find the year in which we reach 99% of the max population, or the steady state population. The best way to do this is by writing our own function which solves the ODE. If we scroll to the bottom of the script, you'll find the function definition. It's called population, and it takes 5 inputs and gives 2 outputs. The first input is t, which is a vector containing at least 2 points. If t is a 2 element vector, the function treats the elements as the start and end points of the time vector for ODE45, and the algorithm will choose the step size automatically. If t contains at least 3 elements, ODE45 will solve the ODE at those time points. If you want to just specify a start and end year, and let MATLAB choose the step size for you, supply the t vector as a 2 element vector containing the start and end year. Otherwise, give the t vector all the times at which you want to solve the ODE. We're going to do the latter in this problem, but once again, I'm leaving the option for you to do both available. Also, the function accepts the options variable, which changes the accuracy of ODE45. Since we didn't actually change the default accuracy in line 15, this won't do anything, but if you change line 15, then you'll get slightly different results. The function itself is pretty simple. All we need to do is define the ODE and call the ODE45 function. We defined the anonymous function representing dp dt and passed it into the ODE45 function. ODE45 returns two outputs, the time vector, tt, and the population vector, p. If t only contains the start and end times, tt will be auto-generated by ODE45's adaptive step size. Otherwise, t and tt are identical. Now that we have the function, let's go back to the main part of the script and finish part c. We called the population function and the code ran without any problems. I chose to ignore the tt output because t is a multi-element vector, thus t and tt are identical, and we have no need for the redundant tt. Now let's find the year in which we hit 99% of the steady state population. I made the variable pss to represent the steady state population, then made the variable p99 to represent what 99% of the steady state is. The t99 variable obtains the time at which p99 is reached. The p is greater than or equal to p99 statement returns a logical vector indicating whether each value of p is greater than or equal to p99. When we index the t vector using the logical vector, it returns all the years in which p is greater than p99. The min statement just grabs the first year this happens. The plot looks pretty similar to our anticipated solution, which is good. 
At t equals 1800, the population is our initial population. The red dashed line denotes 99% of the steady state population, and we can see that it intersects the population curve just around the year 2125, which agrees with the fprintf output printed to the command window. The curve appears to level off a little under 10 billion people, which corresponds to the steady state value of a over b, which turns out to be 9.655 billion people. Part D of the problem wants us to investigate how the population changes if we gradually increase the birth rate parameter a. Since the steady state population is a over b, we should anticipate an increase in the global population as a increases. This should be intuitive since the birth rate increases. We have three different a values to test, so let's solve the ODE for each iteration using a for loop. The A data variable stores the three A values. The PA matrix contains three rows and a lot of columns. We call the population function with the particular A value, then store the result in the corresponding row of the PA matrix. All three curves start at the initial population and have a similar shape as figure one. As we increase the birth rate, the curves appear to level off at a higher population value. This is because the steady state population increases with increasing A. It seems that each curve appears to start leveling off sooner than the previous curve. The blue curve, which is the lowest of the three birth rates, looks like it starts leveling off around 2150, whereas the yellow curve begins to stabilize somewhere around 2075. Therefore, increasing the birth rate not only increases the steady state population, but also decreases the time it takes to approach the steady state value. Now let's investigate how the population changes if we gradually increase the death rate parameter b. This time, we should anticipate a decrease in the global population since the death rate increases. Like before, we'll set up a for loop to iterate through each b value. The B data and PB variables serve the same purpose as the A data and PA variables from the previous part. The for loop is pretty much the same as well. We just pass in the specific B value instead of the specific A value. Once again, all three curves start at the initial population and gradually rise up to the steady state value. As the death rate increases, the steady state populations decrease as expected. This concludes the population model problem. I really like this example because it's a very pertinent topic in today's society. Although population modeling has been around for a long time, it's still very difficult to project. It's interesting that such a complicated subject can be distilled into a first order ODE. Of course, this is an incredibly simplified model, but in my very unbiased opinion, the fact that we can even make our own elementary population predictions in this class is pretty darn cool. It turns out that the UN Population Division predicts that the world population will level out around the year 2100 to about 10.9 billion people. A cool experiment you should do on your own is finding the A and B values which make the population curve somewhat match the one shown on the screen. I specifically coded this problem to allow for easy parameter customization, so it would be really cool if you found a set of A and B values which matched the UN's projection. See you next time.